I was watching a clinched reptiles video on YouTube. If you don't know who that is, he's an amazing biologist who focuses on herpetology, the study of reptiles and amphibians. I watch him because as a reptile keeper, I like to learn new things. And something I learned today is that there's another group of reptiles out there I knew nothing about. Everybody knows snakes, lizards, turtles, and even crocodilians, but what if I told you there's another group, the Tuataras? Not long ago, I made a video about the Sheltapusic, the snake that's not a snake. In that video, I pointed out the key visible features that make it clear that the Sheltapusic was actually a lizard. You could tell just by the face it was not a snake. However, when you look at a Tuatara, it's hard to argue that it is anything other than a lizard. Though, it's not. Reptiles stem from the class Reptilia. Two branches split off. Parareptilia, which are now all extinct, and Eureptilia. Under Eureptilia, you get the Sauria classification, which contains the most recent ancestors to modern reptiles. I'm about to mispronounce all of these names. Within Sauria, you get the Archosauriformis, aka crocodiles, birds, and various extinct dinosaurs. Yes, I said birds. Birds are, in fact, reptiles. Then you get to the testudines, turtles, squamata, lizards and snakes, then lastly, oh boy, I know I'm going to butcher this, rhynchocephalia. Anyways, this group only has one remaining living member, the tuatara, which is not considered a lizard. So why the heck is it not a lizard? Well, when it was first classified in 1831 by John Edward Gray, he classifies it as an agamid lizard, like a bearded dragon. In 1867, Albert Gunther said, Wait a darn second, that's not an agamid. It got weird features. Let's give the thing its own classification. So they did, because science. Now, because science is not really a good enough answer, and I feel you guys would probably leave me some angry comments below if I just left the video at that, so here's why these animals are not considered lizards. Short answer, they're evolutionarily different. Long answer, body structure. Tuataras have crystallia, which are rib-like bones that only crocodilians also have. This was kind of the giveaway that Tuataras were not modern lizards, but are actually more closely related to crocodiles, which are way older on the evolutionary chain, despite having a very lizard-like form. There's many other traits the scientists found over time to further prove that they're not lizards. So now that we know that the Tuatara is sadly on its own little island, let's talk about where the Tuatara lives. Oh, that's actually on little islands. Well, more specifically, the various little islands around the North Island of New Zealand, with populations on the Brothers Islands below the Northern Island of New Zealand, between the North and the South Island of New Zealand, as well. New Zealand. Now, typically, when I cover an interesting reptile on this channel, there's always something sad about it, like the fact that Tuataras were almost completely extinct due to Polynesian rats. It's always the rats. However, New Zealand said kaurit and decided instead to wipe out the rats. Today, there are about 60,000 to 100,000 tuataras in the wild. They're a protected species, and there are various attempts to breed them and get their numbers even higher. They have been bred in captivity, although not common or easy, and they've also been found again in 2008 on the North Island's mainland, believed to be the first in 200 years. Obviously, New Zealand really loved these little lizards, I, mean, I mean not lizards, and they wish to protect them. They are the last of their kind, and hopefully they live on for centuries more to come. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, take care. Kauri. 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 What a fun language.